Pretty much everyone who's watching this video probably had an insane start to 2023 in their stock market accounts. I know I did, I bet you did as well. Now we're starting to see some pain. The S&P 500 is down just a little bit, but that really doesn't show the true story of what's going on. Some of the retail names out there over the past month have been hit massively. I'm talking 10, 20, 30, 40% for some of these retail names. A lot of the retail names are held by retail investors. I'm a retail investor. Investor, you're a retail investor. We're not institutions. We're not hedge funds. So I bet you felt a decent amount of pain recently. Let's not forget the crazy early 2023 we had. This is the warning I want to give to people. It's not time to panic, okay? I want to talk about all the details around it and some interesting market dynamics. But first, before we get into all that, if you're new here, I'm Austin. I'm a co-owner of cloudbusinessweek.com and I'm a stock market investor. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you being here in a massive way. Click that subscribe button. We're somewhere in the 2000s subscriber range. If you're not one of those people, click that button, drop a like for me. I appreciate you in a major way. And as a thank you for doing that, here's a picture of my brand new puppy. Her name's Penny. She has literally doubled in size since we got her like two or three weeks ago. She was seven pounds. Now she's 14 pounds. Anyway, she's a standard poodle. She's a great girl. Let's talk about the stock market though. So like I said, s and is down about 3% over the past month and down 3% over the past week. But that still puts us at a year-to-date gain of over 12% on the index. So if you're just an index fund investor, you probably haven't even really felt any pain at all. But most people who own any amount of individual stocks and specifically any amount of retail names, higher growth names, potentially more speculative plays, you have felt the pain in a major way. The Fed did not raise rates this month, but they signaled that they're probably gonna do one more rate hike in 2023. Stocks started to fall big time, and Fed said they're probably gonna hold rates higher for longer than they had projected, with less rate cuts coming in the future. I see a real rate of 1% coming. So if we have a 3% inflation, I think we're gonna have a 4% Fed funds rate for a real rate of 1%. That's what I think the Fed's new target is gonna be. They haven't come out and put a new target on it. They're still got their 2% target as what they're projecting. But here's the deal with these rate hikes, okay? If we have one more rate hike, how much is that really going to change the equities landscape, okay? We've already got the pressure of the five plus percent interest rates on these higher growth names. The companies that this actually hurts probably already have this news priced in. So now we've just got a little bit of fear to the downside. More fear though, this is what I want to talk about. More fear is not selling time. More fear is normally buying time, especially if you're a long-term investor. If you're a swing trader, if you're a day trader. If you trade at all, you're trying to get in and out of stocks. This is not the video for you. I don't play in that space. All I worry about is long-term opportunities that I'm going to hold for minimum one year, but probably way longer than that as it relates to individual stocks. So if I'm holding for years, this small blip on the radar is only a buying opportunity for me. Here's one caveat though. The stocks I am not adding to right now and some of the stocks I'm considering trimming or completely getting out of altogether are companies that have low cash balances on their balance sheet. Companies that are EPS negative or companies that are negative income from operations. Why I care about income from operations is because some companies are EPS positive but are still negative in income from operations because they're getting interest income. Since the Fed funds rate is so high, since T-bills are paying over 5% interest, a lot of companies are taking their cash, putting it in T-bills, and they're getting paid interest. Those interest income numbers go toward the EPS numbers. So instead of EPS, I'm actually way more focused on income from operations right now. If the Fed starts to cut rates, those companies that have that interest income, it's gonna come down and come down and come down as the rates that they're getting on those T-bills come down and down and down. And then their EPS number is gonna look worse and worse and worse as we compare sequentially and year over year. I don't want that to happen to my stock. I know that stocks follow earnings over the long term. So if I have a company that's EPS is dropping on a year over year basis, stock price is probably gonna be dropping as well. Not something I want as a long-term investor. So my main warning here is to stay away from fundamentally poor companies. Normally we should stay away from fundamentally poor companies, but I don't think it's a time to go risk on like crazy. I don't think it's a time to put a bunch of money into spec stocks. There are times where you can make tons of money in risky, risky stocks and tons of money in spec plays. High interest rate environment times, 
probably a worse economy in 2024 than 2023. Those are not the times to buy those names. A great time to buy those names would have been mid 2020 when we had everything flying to the moon. People were literally making money on actually total trash garbage companies. Companies that had terrible revenue growth, companies that were very, very negative income from operations, companies with terrible balance sheets. People were making 100, 200, 300% on some of these companies. We're not in one of those times right now. We're in more of a risk off market. And I would say more than that, we're in a stock pickers market. And a stock pickers market is a market where fundamentals reign supreme. You have to look for an undervalued company that you believe is being disrespected by the market in the short term, that's going to be respected by the market in the long term. So if you're out there selling stocks, the stocks that make sense to me to sell are stocks that are bad balance sheet companies that are EPS negative and that have negative income from operations because the story is just gonna get uglier from here, most likely. There are some exceptions to this. SoFi is negative income from operations. SoFi is negative EPS. I'm a shareholder of SoFi. I'm not selling SoFi right now. I believe in the company over the long term in a massive way. I believe in their ability, even in this rough economic time, to actually flip to profits of income from operation and flip to gap EPS profits as well. It's always a company by company basis when we're in a stock pickers market, and we definitely are right now. But limit the exposure to the speculative companies, limit the exposure to the high, high risk companies, and consider putting money into value stocks. Try to be the Warren Buffett of stock picking for a little bit, buy a great company at a fair price, okay? Or even better, buy a great company at an absolutely disgustingly undervalued price. There are definitely some stocks that are undervalued right now. Find those opportunities, do that research work, wrap your head around the company's business model and make sure the fundamentals are looking nice because we're probably gonna have a worse economy in 2024 than we do in 2023. And all those companies that are getting this net interest income from all these T-bills that they have money in, as they bring the rates down a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, those EPS numbers are gonna get worse and worse and worse and we'll be in a worse economy. So stay fundamentals focused, stay long-term focused, don't get stressed out by all the noise. Just make sure you're in a continual position of power and the companies that you own in the stock market are also in a continual position of power, no matter what economic time we're in. Hope this was valuable to you. Thanks for stopping by. Drop a subscribe, drop a like. I appreciate you in a major way. Have an amazing day.